Aloha kakoa pau. This is a Kaiupua Fife once again with Voices of Truth, sponsored by the Kiwani Foundation. And uh, once again, this segment is uh, coming to you folks from uh, the island of Molokai. This is one of our neighbor island segments. We're very pleased to be here. And we're very happy also to have uh, as our guest on this uh, segment, uh, Stacy Cavello. Hi. Aloha, Stacy. Aloha. Thank you so much for coming. We know you're a busy person. When we started uh, looking for, uh, you know, kind of creating a list of people in the community to speak with, uh, your name kept coming up over and over again. And fortunately, we were able to meet with you earlier today. And so I have a little bit of a background on what you're doing. I'd like to uh, kind of let you know that the, the objective of this uh, Voices of Truth segment uh, which is going to be shown over all the public access channels uh, throughout Hawaii, is to motivate the ultimate positive future for Native Hawaiians. And uh, so the people that we interview are not necessarily superstars who are known from around the state or outside or heavy-duty activists from whatever, but people who are working, who have found their kuleana and are working at it in the community. And so. That's why we've asked uh, you to be with us today to kind of talk about what, you, what you're doing. Um, maybe you could tell us, uh, you're, you're Molokai, born and raised? Born and raised, Molokai. Yeah. In fact, right here is Kalamaula, which is Antikawila. So I was raised just a little ways down on Kalamaula homestead. Kalamaula, yeah. And um, um, my dad was uh, one time worked for the plantation. And actually, we grew up on uh, homestead farming. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I think at one time, he was identified as the miracle farmer. Um, salt flats, uh, kiawe trees, and uh, I know when we moved from the plantation down to the homestead, it's seven of us, mm -hmm. um, and remember saying to one another, why did they bring us to this deserted, you know? At that time, there was just a... Uh, um, four of us so, yeah. and my three younger brothers who were mm -hmm. born there so um, born and raised at Molokai. But yeah. when you moved to that uh, the homelands it was like a desert for you folks. It was huh? a Is desert yeah. and um, for us as young kids it's mm -hmm. you know how, how could they do that to us <laughs> um, but we learned how to um, uh, actually it was hard work but mm -hmm. we had no neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, um, my brothers, my younger brothers, who grew up with Auntie Kawila's uh, sons, you know, after the chores were all done, this is where they would come and hang out and mm -hmm. uh, do their crabbing and yeah. what have you, right out front here. Yeah, close so. to the car, car. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But we had our own little homestead mm -hmm. um, people, and this and Kalama Ula for us is is home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kalamaula now is a, is a, it's Mauka, right? Uh, from from here you go up that way and then, um, then Mauka. There's the new homestead Mauka. Uh -huh. um, but this has always been, this yeah. this place here has always been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, John K. Mikawa one time uh, brought uh, one of our family reunions and he took us up to a certain spot that he said, Kalamaula this is, and I don't know what that, that means, but I want to kind of go back to where you're, you were mentioning that your father, you had a you had plantation, kind of a plantation background, which at that time was what, pineapple, huh? No, actually, my parents are from Maui. Uh -huh. um, my mom's from Hana, and my dad's from Pu'unene, Maui. Oh. So they came here in the early 40s, mm -hmm. and um, um, my dad worked for the plantation for a few years. Um, my mother's goal was to um, be on homestead land. I see. Yeah. And so when she was uh, awarded the uh, homestead at Kalamaula, um, it was just a, a old house by itself. Mm -hmm. And to today, there's still no neighbors yeah. around us. So we had um, all of that area to ourselves that we grew up on. Yeah. And you sp you, the way you're talking, you still have the house? You still have the house? Um, my still parents there? have passed on, yeah. but um, um, 
my youngest brother's um, son stays mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. uh, you also, in talking about your father, uh, kind of mentioned that um, it sounds like he was a pretty good farmer. Hard worker. Hard worker. Yeah. yeah. So you know, um, he didn't grow up in farming, but no. to do to us, he just had that natural ability. I mean, he'd always say, if you don't talk to the plants, the plants will die, you know. Um, so actually what he did, he dug a well, was brackish, mm -hmm. and, um, and flushed out the well to, to get it as fresh as good. And uh, mm -hmm. actually from the rustic uh, landscape of salt flats, and it became a landscape of uh, um, truck produce, vegetable farming, oh, okay. and cantaloupes and watermelon. Cantaloupes and watermelon. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my brothers um, kind of still have that in them. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was hard work. So truck farming in that uh, you folks raised more than you needed yourself and then sold it or, mm -hmm. or marketed it was, and took it outside? Yeah, it was so. a market. Mm -hmm. And I see, uh, I know we visited with some of the uh, some of the farmers here on Molokai over the past couple of days, and uh, they're trying different things. Uh, mm -hmm. they're, they're, and they're trying a different s scale mm -hmm. of uh, farming. I know I had heard years ago, not too many years ago, but someone had done a study on Molokai. And the data, they, the statistics they came up with said that um, of the Native Hawaiians on the island of Molokai, an average of 60% of their nutritional needs were met through hunting, gathering, farming, uh, doing for themselves, subsistence. fishing, subsistence uh -huh. type mm -hmm. existence. Do you think that's pretty close still, or you have a I, fear I for believe it? so. Yeah. Um, um, in fact, you know, subsistence is in more ways than one. If you mm -hmm. don't hunt, then if you need venison, you know who does, sure. and then they'll yeah. share. Yeah. Um, likewise with fishing, yeah. you know, or um, Vegetables, uh, yeah, crops. Um, yeah, for subsistence purposes. Yeah. You know, My heli, like, everyone kind yeah, of sure. Yeah, yeah. And actually, that's a very uh, traditional, traditional way that uh, the communities, uh, the Ohanas, have survived for generations. Mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. maybe centuries. Right. Uh, and that's how we get into the areas of uh, expertise. Uh, someone having a kuleana within the community taking care of their focus, and others took care of theirs. Uh, the fishermen caught fish, mm -hmm. and the mahiai, mm -hmm. you know, the farmer farmed, and the basket weaver wove. And uh, if, if everybody took, knew the kuleana and, and took care of it, you had a thriving community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, know, you had a, a Omona, a community that had Yeah, yeah, had I didn't Momona, yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so actually, you don't have like multiple generations of attachment to Molokai. But no, I'm yeah, no yeah. actually, um, but um, the where the the generation that's born here, uh, mm -hmm. and then our children mm -hmm. and their children. So so as we um, move into the future, you're building that kind right, of a relationship. Right, right, yeah. and um, you know. Um, but the connection, really, Moloka'i and where my mama comes from, Hana, is still um, oh. heavily yeah. woven together. Yeah. Mm. That's interesting that um, I hear Hana mentioned a lot over here. I mean, it's like on Kauai, uh, there was a relationship with Kona, quite a relationship. So it's interesting that mm -hmm. these points on different islands right, uh, right. kind of seem to interact more than others did, perhaps. Right. So you did you did you pretty much stay on Molokai? Did you uh, did you grow up, go away, come back? Well, I, during the time when we grew, were growing up here, it was like as soon as you're done with high school, you have to leave the island. You know, mm -hmm. there's a plantation. Mm -hmm. um, our summer work was working the plantation, so that you know what is hard work, and you want to further your education. Right. Um, and we had mango orchards, and um, so. During that time, and I think you still hear the chatter, there's nothing here mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. um, but for many of us, as when we left home, or, you know, I 
I left home when I was 17, mm -hmm. and um, that was some time ago, and lived on Oahu, got my schooling and worked there. Mm -hmm. But after I started to have my children, mm -hmm. um, I, well, growing up here as a teenager, a young person, you'd say, God, I can't wait to get off this rock, you know. The rock. Um, the rock. But as soon as you're off the rock and you're done with your um, getting blinded by the so-called city lights, yeah. it's, there's nothing really there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you yearn to come back to um, what you value. Right. So um, eventually I was able to make full circle and to come home and to raise my family mm -hmm. um, home. You know, and um, this is where I'll be until time to journey all the way home. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so when you were away, you said you uh, finished schooling there. Uh, did you work while you were away? Did you raise family? Yes. Uh, combination? Yes, or, both. Or, yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when you came back, when you had the calling to come back, did you go to work here? Did you land a job here before you came back? Or was no, that part of the, no. Um, the formula? Or? Actually, when I moved home, I was told, don't move home, there's no jobs, you mm -hmm. know. But um, you, you have to get innovative. And I was able to find employment and mm -hmm. was able to um, end up working where I always worked. And at that time, it was a telephone company. Oh, and mm -hmm. I retired from mm -hmm. Verizon. Uh, a couple years ago, oh, I see. so, mm -hmm. um, and and there is as long as you're you can be productive, you'll find something here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a millionaire, yeah. maybe not, you yeah. know, yeah. but it, everybody's values. Mm -hmm. um, it's what you value. Well, yeah, it sounds like uh, after growing up here and not being able to wait until you could get off the rock and then going away. And uh, that being blinded by the city lights, that's kind of uh, interesting. Uh, it, it brings something to my mind. Uh, and then coming back because something told you this is where you wanted to be to raise your children, I guess. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. So despite wanting to leave as a impetuous teenager, the reality became, hey, this is a pretty good place for family here, I guess. Huh? Yeah, and I, and I come from a family of seven. Mm -hmm. and. Um, um, we all moved back home except for one of us, and, and I, I lost um, one brother early on. Uh, and but his intentions um, before we lost him was to come back mm -hmm. home too. Mm -hmm. So um, there's that um, there's that driver that yeah. you know. I think if you talk to most people that grew up on Molokai. Uh, no matter where you go, Molokai mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. will always be home. Well, you know, I, on Kauai, where I live, uh, it's not where my ohana is from, but that's where I'm living, and that's where I've been for 14, 15 years. And uh, it's like the people from Ni'iau who live on Kauai, and they always talk about Ni'iau, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had to leave for their various reasons, but to them, uh, when they talk about the good home time, small kid, growing up, peaceful, mm -hmm. less stress, Nihau is, is mm -hmm. where they like to be. Mm -hmm. So this is a, for you and, and your children here, it's only how now for you folks now. And one of the things in a community like Moloka is the, kind of the interdependence, uh, you know, the things that need to be done and can be done. And so during your working time with Verizon, I imagine you were punching the clock and putting that time in, raising the family at the same time. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then after you retired, uh, you must have had a lot of free time on your hands because I imagine really. the, family was, the family was grown, right? Mm -hmm. So. Well, actually, to me, if you live on Molokai, you know, I re so often friends from the outer islands, especially on Oahu, would say, oh my gosh, what do you people do there? Mm -hmm. You know, what is there to do on your island? Mm -hmm. And um, I would always respond, it depends what you want to do. Right. Yeah. Um, if we want to spend money, we can jump on the plane and 
go nuts a little bit in mm -hmm. the shopping malls and then but we know we can come home to peace right. uh, um, if you want to spend time with family um, then this is where it's at mm -hmm. if you want the um, simplicity of a, your surroundings and and absorb um, the values of the basic fundamentals of life mm -hmm. this is it it's not to say there aren't thorns to yeah, it all sure. you know um, but living here whether you're working you know or as your children are growing up or what many of our people on the island get involved um, in the different activities or or community functions activities however right. you want to identify mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. um, we are the resources you yeah. know um, we don't have a bridge where you can bring all the um, experts here to make things happen so you have to depend on yourself and on one another Your own resources, um, right? right and so you know the resources are not only the natural resources but the human resource that sure. we have so yeah. you you find yourself wearing many hats and there I would think that just about anybody you talk to on this island um, they're into one thing or the other mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um, to help make things happen sure mm -hmm. or several at one time or, or several at one time yeah. right yeah when you mentioned uh, like I keep getting this the bright city lights and, and something comes back to me was you know, when people say, what do you do on Molokai? And I picture this moon, and, and some, somewhere I saw Molokai nightlife. Yeah. And what you see is the moon. Yeah. Molokai nightlife. But, you know, with the group that we were traveling with the past couple of days here on Molokai, there was the same kinds of questions, because in that group were people from uh, uh, Oahu, the other islands, uh, people who've been around, and some student... Uh, Oh, work experience type uh, people who come along, and, and they would all, and they said, ask the same question. Well, what do you do around here? Well, you know, during the week, uh, we would see people around and so forth, but on a weekend, I mean, you know, driving out to the other end of the island, coming back, I mean, there's no question what some people do. I mean, you see huge groups of family, ohana, friends, gathering and visiting, spending time talking, uh, you know, they're going to be having a fixing food, some are fishing, some are surfing, and it's like, my goodness, so, uh, once they could see what was going on, I said, well, that's what people in Mokai do, so, mm -hmm. in addition to working and, and make it, making, making ends meet, mm -hmm. you know, meeting your need. But, you know, within a community, too, even as small as the island is here, uh, Molokai, and the, and the population is small, when I first came in the first night, I went past, I drove past, uh, uh, Kulana Oivi, and the place was jammed. It was a Thursday night, you mm -hmm. know, and it looked to me like a big percent of the population was there, and I went in to meet with Matt, you know, at Akaku, and I said, wow, what's going on? Uh, you know, I said, somebody said, oh, a couple of meetings. But you know, on the, on the other islands I'd be at, they have a hard time getting people to turn out for meetings, community-type meetings. You have people come in from all over the place, and they have a few people show up. And so, and I've been to Molokai many times for different kinds of meetings, and then big time turnout. What do you think is that? What do you think that's a function of? Um, whenever it has something to do with um, the um, future of our island, or our kiki, mm -hmm. um, our children, or um, it. Like I say, you're involved one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So um, nobody can do it by themselves. Mm -hmm. So people turn out, participate, you know, participate, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, whether it's to share their manao, to agree or disagree, mm -hmm. um, or 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 come together and and build on on what will be best, whether it's for little league yeah. um, or church function mm -hmm. or or some economic development for the island or, or, you know, what was it somebody asked? Um, well, some people on Molokai tend to always want to stop things so that's when they all turned out. Mm -hmm. But um, one of um, the activists said, um, no, we're not 
here to stop things. Mm -hmm. We're here to uh, protect mm -hmm. what we value. Mm -hmm. So for many reasons, that's how you end up having people yeah. turned out. Whether it's yeah. to protect um, their interests as a family or an organization or whatever the, the children are involved in, be it Little League or, mm -hmm. or some, some high school function or what have mm -hmm. you'll have um, people turn out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see, uh, you know, uh, what, I, what I, I'm hearing what you're saying and I'm thinking about a, a couple of farmers that we met the other day. And uh, these are fellows who maybe haven't been farmers recently or maybe never been farmers. Uh, but they see that as something here on Molokai, Molokai they can do, then that needs to be done. And those folks uh, that I spoke with are looking at a long, long haul type commitments because they're they're working with, in some pretty rough circumstances trying to grow crops that they're maybe not totally familiar with, some that they are. And what I kept hearing them saying is, uh, we're trying to work out as many kinks as we can today so that our children who are working with us will have a little easier time and the grandchildren and so we're, we're talking about this kind of a move towards the future and and from the most basic things uh, uh, sustainability uh, feeding your family first and then beyond that uh, becoming a part of the economic participating in the economic growth of the island so when people turn when I see people turning out like this I gotta say yeah, these people aren't here just for putting out fires or just to obstruct. I think a lot of them now are looking to the future and want to be a part and participating in it. After you retired, uh, what did you do to to keep yourself interested and in, in doing things and uh, being productive in the society? Actually, it's like I go back to what I said earlier, living here, you be involved, whether you're working or you're in retirement. Mm -hmm. So for now, you know, I, I'm quite active in a community process um, for, an, for a nonprofit entity as a volunteer, along with many others mm -hmm. um, that are putting in their blood, sweat, and tears. Um, it's something that we do even when we're working. Mm -hmm. So in retirement, um, I'm able to still continue to, to do it, um, being mm -hmm. involved in the, um, some community development, uh, um, and that has to do with an organization we call Keopuni Lokahi, or the Molokai Enterprise Community Process. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a process of trying to implement um, a plan that the community had put together mm -hmm. um, in a holistic approach. And, uh, establishing some economic engines mm -hmm. um, but there's many of us there's many hands yeah, that, sure. uh, and um, many planters you know that planted the seeds mm -hmm. and some of us are still in there um, trying to nourish it and see it through yeah. you know this uh, this process that you're talking about that's part of a bigger uh, or not necessarily bigger but it's part of a Kind of a, fe a federally funded right. process. Right. Um, in 1999 or well, 1998, we went through a community process to apply for a federal designation. Mm -hmm. um, at that, it was called the empowerment zone process. Mm -hmm. So throughout the nation or the United States, anyway, um, you had about 120 um, applicants that were uh, selected. Uh, um, for empowerment zone, and uh, um, we got designated as an enterprise community, which is just a, a notch down from the empowerment zone. That's an EC that I said. right. So it's, it's enterprise community. Right, mm -hmm. and it's a federal designation um, for ten years. Uh, but what it allows us to do, um, the whole process was empowerment and self governance. Mm -hmm. um, so we've done some projects um, from the plan um, that in partnership with many other mm -hmm. um, organization or entities or um, federal agencies to help leverage funds to 
um, try and make things happen. Mm -hmm. Some of these projects was on the back burner or some of the projects um, were created from that process mm -hmm. and we've in implemented uh, it through the, throughout the, we're going into our sixth year now. Uh, sixth year as a? As an enterprise community. community. But that, So dropping back, um, were you involved at the front end of this? Yes. You were involved at the uh -huh. front. So is it kind of like a pulling together like a grant proposal? How did how did this work? Because well, actually, it was a grant application. A grant application. Ap yeah. Um, so for 10 years, we get so much federal dollars. and um, But the key of that um, designation is so mm -hmm. that you can leverage and implement your, your mm -hmm. programs or your projects mm -hmm. or what you see would be of benefit to your community um, and you know basically what you work towards is is developing a healthy community but the the basic foundation of this whole plan is based on our cultural um, cultural values, values. Mm -hmm. yeah we keep hearing values here on Moka and that's a great thing to hear maybe one of these days I'll be driving past Kulano Oivi and I see a whole bunch of people in there and I drop in maybe you folks will be be carrying forward with this planning process. Yeah. Stacy, mahalo for being with us. We're just about out of time. I want to thank you so much thank you. for spending the time. Mm -hmm. And we want to thank you folks for listening in to uh, Voices of Truth. Uh, tune in. We know we have new segments breaking every week on all the islands public access. Let your friends know. You may see somebody you know here. And if you don't, you may see somebody you'd like to know. Again, mahalo nui. This is Kai Opua 5 for the Kiwani Foundation. Well, growing up here as a teenager, a young person, you'd say, God, I can't wait to get off this rock, you know. The rock. Um, the rock. But as soon as you're off the rock and you're done with your um, getting blinded by the so-called city lights, yeah. it's, there's nothing really there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you yearn to come back to um, what you value. Right. So um, eventually I was able to make full circle and to come home and to raise my family mm -hmm. um, home, mm -hmm. you know. And um, this is where I'll be until time to journey all the way home. Yeah.